Hello everyone, this is Elad from Astrolab Diagnostics and today I would like to discuss a recently published manuscript where CYTOF and single cell RNA sequencing was used to compare smokers to non-smokers. This study was published in Cell Reports Medicine and it comes from the Bell Group at the NIH and here the researchers have eight patients, four non-smokers and four smokers and they are using a combination of single cell RNA sequencing and mass cytometry to compare these two groups. I think this study is a fantastic example of how to use these kind of discovery oriented technologies. This is a limited number of, uh, of individuals, only eight, and yet thanks to the power of these high complexity technologies, the, uh, the authors come up with some pretty interesting insights regarding the structure of the immune system and how it changes between smokers and non-smokers. I'm going to show you a brief reanalysis of the data using Astrolabe. Before I do, I would like to thank, to thank Doug Bell and Michelle Campbell for sharing the data. Here is how the experiment looks like in Astrolabe. We have the FCS files and we have the two patient groups. Smokers are SM, non-smokers are NS. And I'm going to start by going to the cell subset navigator. This is a composite view of the entire experiment. It's using data from all of the FCS files. And you can see how Astrolabe identified the major cell populations up here and then organized them down here in a dimensionality reduction view. So here are the B cells, here are the myeloids, and finally the T cells are here to the left. I'm going to dive straight to the experimental question, and I'm going to run a differential abundance analysis between the two patient groups. When I do, I'm going to get a volcano plot where every dot is one of the populations and the y-axis is the significance. Due to the low sample count, we can't expect to see anything significant, However, looking at the fold changes, there are a few interesting trends. So for example, it appears that the fold change increases for the memory CD8 T cells. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to use the dashboard up here to choose the naive or MRA CD8 T cells. Scrolling down, we can see how the frequency of the memory CD8 T cells increases in the smoke population compared to the non-smokers. This is, seems to be a two-fold change, and the population of the the frequency of the naive cells seems to decrease by a similar fold change. Let's add the CD4 T cells to the analysis as well, and we're going to see a similar change. There is an increase in the memory compartment, there is a decrease in the frequency of the naive and the MR cells. We can take a step back by clicking on compartment, and now we're comparing the T cell population as a whole. And you will notice that these are pretty similar. In other words, there are no major differences in the entire population of the T-cells. However, when we look at the memory and naive separation, there is an increase in the memory compartment across both CD4 and CD8 T-cells. Another part of the platform is the differential expression analysis. This allows us to compare the intensity of different markers across the experimental conditions in each one of the populations. So in this heat map, every row is one subset every column is one marker, the deeper the color, the greater the fold change. One trend which I found interesting when looking at the heat map is uh, if we examine CD61 in the basophils, it seems to decrease between the non-smokers and the smokers. Taking a closer look, there seems to be about a 15 to 20 percent decrease in the expression of this marker, which could indicate less of a response within the smoker population. Another trend we can examine is if we look at CD16 and go down the column, we can see that there are differences in numerous populations, notably within the naive or MRA CD8 T cells, the CD45 positive, RA positive. So if we click on them and click on CD16 and go to the feature box plot, there is a very clear increase in the level of this marker between the smoker population and the non-smokers. Going back to the title of the paper, single cell analyses identify dysfunctional CD16 positive CD8 T cells. So Astrolabe reproduced these results very nicely, and it only took us a few mouse clicks to get here. I strongly recommend checking out the paper 
the authors have done a fantastic job integrating CyTOF with single cell RNA sequencing. As always, thank you for your time. Please feel free to subscribe on YouTube and LinkedIn. And if you need any help analyzing your CyTOF or mass cyton overflow cytometry data, please reach out. I'm allowed at astrolabediagnostics.com.